So welcome back everyone once again. This is Kevin from CSMI um, in Australia. Today I'm going to share um, a video with you guys on some track maintenance. And I'm jumping the gun here because I'm supposed to do part three explaining the controls on the radio. But I've just gone one step ahead because I've used the excavator to dig, had an oil leak, and hence I've got to take the tracks off. And that's what I'm going to share, how to take the tracks off on this machine or any other excavator. Um, it's the, 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 the principle is pretty much the same. It's going to make your life easy if you do it this way. So let's get straight into it. Uh, also, thanks for your questions. I know there's a few people who have emailed me and I haven't responded that. I've just been flat out, so I haven't got there yet, but I will. Okay, so this machine, uh, the EX9700, uh, uh, based on a Viva 970, uh, is, is what we have up here. And I pull the tracks off. I'll show you the tracks. These are the tracks. Pretty good, pretty good quality. They've got circlips on the inside, as you can see up there. Uh, they retain it pretty well. Uh, the tracks are cast quite well built and I did get mud into it and I just didn't want the mud inside the tracks and hence um, I've taken the complete track off. Now, how did I do it? So, uh, firstly, if you're working on any excavator or dozer, the best thing you can do is chalk it up like this because once it's floating up in the air, you can just spin it around. Uh, you've got free track movement. You're not fighting the machine. And it's because it's up, you can have a look at the undercarriage and everything a lot more easier. I'm just using an old motorcycle battery that I had. Uh, I was almost going to throw it out, but it's come pretty handy. It gives me the right height and I've chalked it up. So that's what I've got underneath to pack it up. Um, how did I get the tracks off? So quite simple. Firstly, let me get the camera close so you guys can see what I'm trying to show you. Now... Up here, you can see there's a plate on, on this one, and there's a plate uh, on, uh, I've taken it off now. Now, there are four bolts on this plate. Once you take it out, you can see there's a hole up here. And what you do is, once you compress it using an F-clamp, which I'll show you, I put one on the other side, has a demo. Uh, once you put, then you put a pin in there and you lock it in, once it's compressed, because this idler wheel is on a spring. You can see it travels, right? Now, if there's no spring, it'll actually compress all the way. It's pretty hard to compress with my index finger. Hence, we use an F-clamp, which I'll show you on the other side. And then once it compresses, you put a pin and then you release the F-clamp and this thing will stay retracted. Now, once it stays retracted, the first side you want to take out is the idler side because it's got no teeth. However, if the idler side is too tight and it doesn't come off because it's free wheeling, you can go on the other side where you've got the sprocket and the drive, right? You can go on the sprocket and the drive side. So quite simple. First, put the F-clamp, compress it, put the pin in. It stays in place. Take your F-clamp out because this will be retracted. It will be under tension and then you take the track off. Now, be careful. Make sure you got it locked properly, otherwise it's going to spring like a bullet, okay? And where it gets locked, this is where it gets locked. So, this is uh, the pin up here. It'll actually go into the slot. Let me bring it closer, if you can see. It actually gets locked inside that particular slot and then stays uh, pulled back completely. So, that's the, that's the way you actually get um, uh, the track off. I'll, I'll reverse this machine around so you can see what I mean. Spare with me, guys. I'm just going to spin the machine around. Okay. That's better. Okay. So here you can see I've got the F clamp up here. And now what I've done is I've actually completely compressed it. I haven't taken um, the plate out, but I will take the plate out. Once I take the plate out, I'm gonna put a pin in there, and that's the that's the position where the wheel completely retracted. Once the wheel is retracted, I'll then take the F-clamp out, and then I can take the track out. So because the wheel's gonna stay in that position because of the pin keeping it in that particular position and not letting the wheel release out. Now. Once you actually take the track out, it's a good idea to put the F-clamp back again, take the pin out and slowly release this F-clamp so you don't have the wheel under tension for no reason. So you're not compressing the spring. You can do what you want and then you can remount it once you get uh, 
once you get ready to put everything back together. So where was the oil leaking from? Now, I'll get it a bit more closer so that you guys can see this. Okay. So I've got a pressure regulating valve over here and then there's an O-ring around this thing uh, because it's got threads and the O-ring behind the threads prevents um, the oil from leaking. The original O-ring was about one mil in diameter. Uh, I've gone for a 1.5 mil and it seems to have stopped the leak. So the oil was coming out from there and then of course there's a good design on this machine is um, it actually has gratings at the bottom. Well, I'll show you on the next video. And that drains all the oil out and doesn't stay inside the upper carriage. Because most of the machines, it's all sealed. And once it's sealed, you can't drain the oil and that becomes a big issue. So that's a great design uh, to have uh, the grating. I don't know if you can actually see up here. There's, I'll show it in the next video, but there's a lot of grating at the bottom. And it actually lets all anything or any fluids, any leaks that you have actually drain out from there. So it doesn't stay in there. So... Uh, that's pretty much what I have on this on this particular video as um, usual if you have any questions drop us um, an email or leave the, your question in the comments below I'll try to get to it this is Kevin from CSMI in Australia if you're interested in this machine or any of our machines and the other videos you can buy from our website which is csmi.com.au and there'll be a link in the description thank you for watching